the most important thing was being the right ambassador, promoting naval service core values in all of our behaviors. Flying Blue Angel number one, the commanding officer and flight leader of the Blue Angels from Boston, Massachusetts, Commander Steve Foley. Yeah, I grew up in inner city Boston and uh, you know, we played street hockey and we, uh, you know, <laughs> roughed around out in the neighborhoods, but we didn't think about flying fighter jets, that's for sure. And then I went to this small private liberal arts college. You don't think about flying fighter jets there either. But um, we were introduced on the college campus uh, by way of one of my upperclassmen fraternity buddies to a, uh, a pretty smooth talking silver ton, as you might expect, Marine Corps captain. Uh, who was pushing the uh, aviation contract guarantee program. As it turns out, I went Navy uh, and I started right after college. You know, my first flight instructor said in the A-4, said, well, how many Gs have you pulled in this thing? I said, I don't, I don't know, maybe three or four. He's like, okay, cinch down those lap belts. I got the controls. He takes the airplane, we're at, I don't know, 15,000 feet, rolls inverted, six, six and a half G pull. Wow, that was cool. You want to do that? Absolutely. I was hooked. Well, I was uh, first assigned out here to Lemoore, Central Valley, uh, VFA 25, fisted a fleet. Of course, most of my colleagues, when you got assigned to Lemoore uh, and you hadn't been there yet, you sort of ooh, grimace, you're like, ooh, I really wanted to go to Cecil. And, uh, and then you get out here and you realize, wait a minute, we got some game out here. Uh, there's the Sierras just east and there's the coast just west. What a terrific area to fly airplanes. And you know, what better way to get upside down in an airplane than out over the Mojave Desert training to get some of your buds. That was my uh, you know, initial sort of uh, 10 or so years and had an opportunity to serve down at Miramar in the capacity of uh, a Top Gun instructor. I, I looked at that like it was, it was taken on a master's and a PhD simultaneously. And I think any one of my colleagues who were in that organization would uh, vouch the same. I was very fortunate, you know, my colleagues that we showed up together down in Corpus Christi, Texas on a Monday or a Sunday night, I think it was, and uh, we were running into each other at the airport, all applicants for this same job. Uh, I think there were six or seven of us. And we weren't sure we were gonna make it through the next day interview because they almost kicked us out of the, uh, out of the housing complex. We were making a little too much noise, apparently, regaling some tall tales and stories from our previous, you know, 15 or 20 years. So you might imagine we're best of friends. And think of going into an interview series and you know your best of friends are doing the same thing. You can't help but wish all of them, um, you know, the, the, that they are selected. Uh, yeah, you want the job, but you also feel really confident in knowing one element. No matter who that board chooses that day, they're gonna be in great shape the organization, the Blue Angels, is going to be in great shape because these are the folks that you served alongside for the last 17 to 20 years. You know them really well. well. The Admiral calls everybody together at the end of the day and you're standing there with, you know, five or six of your best buds and uh, he says, hey, we really appreciate all that you're each doing uh, for the Naval Service and particularly for Naval Aviation. Wish you the best in your follow-on command assignments and major command assignments. Uh, and tough decision, we had to make a call and we picked, and you know, they call you out. We, and for the next two years, Axel's gonna lead the Blue Angels. And uh, you know, that's a pretty humbling feeling. You know, here you are with thousands of flight hours flying tactics. You've got 20, nearly 20 years behind you uh, in terms of, you know, naval career, and you're starting over. And you got to be able to belly up to the table and take the hits. Uh, hey, boss, that's not how we do this. And even though you're the senior ranking member of the organization, you got to be able to say, uh, I know, uh, I get it, I'll fix it. Let, let's, I'll, I'll do better next time. Uh, that, that's the environment that we so much enjoyed. There are obviously times when things aren't going so well. Maybe it looks like, wow, that's a nice air show. 
And then if you were in the debrief, you'd recognize that, wow, you know, it's been a rough couple of days. What are we gonna do to get back on track? And from a casual observer, you'd say, what are they talking about, back on track? But the level that we're trying to get to is a level that is, you know, it's where the pixie dust is, right? It's in the zone. And that's a tough level to sustain. Um, it's a tough area to touch, uh, to get to even, you know, periodically, let alone sustain. Um, but when you do, it's, uh, it's a special place. That's what we're striving for. And there were many times during my tenure um, as the flight leader and the commanding officer there where I had a gut check after gut check after gut check. I think I share this with at least my teammates. There's a couple of things that we uh, always cherished and one of which was the San Francisco Bay Area show, right? That's just off the charts, fantastic. And um, I will say that uh, Lake Washington uh, in Seattle, flying out of Boeing Field, that was tremendous as well. The most impactful, the most memorable um, of all of the events that I flew with the Blue Angels, and I think my colleagues and teammates would say the same, was the opportunity that we had to support the flyover event, the memorial service event at Fort Ward for Butch Voris. That was a very, very special moment and opportunity. I remember that event like it was yesterday. We flew out of San Francisco International. Uh, we hooked down to the south, um, and I, all I could think about was, you know, how it was a moment to reflect, right? It was a mission of reflection and it was a mission of tribute and memorialization. So that was so impactful. And also in the back of my head was, you better roll out on center line, if you will, and, and make this flyover, you know, happen and not be, you know, 300 feet to the right or to the left, but, you know, execute the flyover. And uh, it's like finding a needle in a haystack from the water seven miles or five or seven miles out in front of the Fort Ord Chapel, you know, buried in some trees. Um, our maintenance officer was there, a little flick of the mirror, and uh, we knew that we were in the right location. So a wonderful tribute, and um, that was a, a very, very uh, special time for us. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Your United States Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron takes pleasure in performing for you this our 26th flight demonstration of the 2006 season. Kevin Kojak Davis was uh, larger than life and uh, just a, a, a great naval aviator, a great officer, and uh, obviously a, a, a great American. There's probably not a day that goes by where you don't have some thought about those folks that you lost to, to a mission and that's certainly the case for, for me and my teammates and I, um, I, I cherish the memories and the opportunity that I had to spend with, uh, with Kojak. He was uh, tough as nails and um, he was somebody that, you know, as a 20-year naval officer, I was inspired by Kojak. That I think for me was telling and I know that he inspired so many others around him and we all feel, um, uh, we all feel a great debt of gratitude to what he brought to the table day in and day out. And um, we remember him with, with uh, you know, very, very fond memories. You're reminded every day that the Blue Angel organization is, is really just another Navy squadron another naval squadron, and in this case, you know, naval aviation unit, uh, no different than others, no different than the unit that's mine sweeping, and no different than the units that is forward deployed on the carrier with flight operations. The missions are the same. The purpose and the intent and uh, the elements that inspire everybody to serve, they're all tangible and they're all relevant and they're all the same. So I reminded myself um, every day, and so did those that I was around the table with, that this is a unique opportunity to represent all of those folks that are currently serving and that have served the Department of Navy. And it's very clear to us that the organization itself is, is a national treasure, and we need to do everything we can during our tenure to live up to that treasure, to live up to that legacy, and to ensure that we promote uh, naval service values in every behavior that we uh, that we conduct.